Well, hello again guys and welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about descent management and high energy approaches. What I really want to show you is when we get lower down how we can manipulate the controls and change the configuration to get back onto profile to ensure we're stabilised by the time we get onto our final approach. So we're currently in descent to an airport called Alicante which is on the east coast of Spain on the Mediterranean Sea and you can see the approach chart here. We're currently routing inbound to a waypoint called Vilna and here you can see it on the chart. Now after Vilna what you can expect if I bring up the uh, ND and the FMC is this arc. We have something called a 20 mile arc which is based on the VOR at the airfield and we fly maintaining 20 miles at all times once we intercept the radial 290 from that VOR and we make a left turn to intercept on the localizer. Now all these points are in the FMC so if I just go to the plan mode uh, there you go you can see after Vilna here's some points that's created and then here's that radial 290 I talked about and there's Delta 290 Tango. Now here's a nice little trick I have to explain this on my takeoff tutorial. Uh, T for Tango is the 20th letter of the alphabet and you can see it's 20 miles from the arc so all mean something these little waypoints and after the Delta 290 Tango we establish ourselves on the localizer for the approach and on the ILS and then descend and make a safe landing. Now the reason I've chosen this approach for this tutorial is because it's quite infamous for high energy approaches and shortcuts because in real life if it's a nice day uh, air traffic control after Vilna can clear you direct to a 10 mile final which obviously is going to be a lot shorter distance flying this full arc and that can lead to you being high. Now if we were planning that we'd manipulate the FMC to ensure that we wouldn't get high and expect that 10 mile final but we're today going to imagine that we've planned to fly this arc and approach the field and we're then going to fly this 10 mile final and we're going to configure the aircraft accordingly to make sure that we stay on profile or recapture the path I should say and make sure we're stabilised by the time we get to about four or five miles. So Everything else is complete for the setup. We've got the courses for the ILS. The minimums are set 412 feet, which is off the chart. The ILS frequency is already tuned. And I've done the landing performance already. Uh, uh, already. Going flap 30, selecting order break 3, and we're going to use idle reverse. Uh, so, we're currently descending in VNAV path. Uh, in VNAV path, it's doing everything to stay on this profile. It's doing a great job. It tries to maintain the speed as well. So, everything's looking very efficient. We are approaching our cleared flight level of 260. All we're going to do is imagine that we'll be held a little bit higher due to traffic below us, which obviously is going to lead us to be high on profile. And I'm going to show you what we do above flight level 100. Uh, we no have any, uh, don't have any speed restrictions uh, to get back onto profile. So approaching at uh, one to go, uh, we would change the descent mode to vertical speed and reduce the rate of descent to a thousand feet per minute. Uh, we do this so we don't get any nuisance TCAS warnings but because I have changed the rate of descent look what happens to our profile it's now slowly going to fall behind below us because we're getting uh, a little bit high now one thing we can do to deal with that is reduce speed okay if we reduce speed we're taking energy away from the aircraft okay and then we can trade that uh, potential energy we call it into kinetic energy during the descent to get back onto profile now this isn't going to be an issue, uh, we do this freely in real life unless we are under a speed restriction uh, which can be the case if you're flying into a busy airport because uh, different operators fly different speeds and then they start sequencing aircraft and everyone starts flying the same speed. But we're going to keep it nice and easy today and we're going to have uh, our speed at our own discretion. So now we're approaching our cleared flight level reducing the speed, you can see the profile is slowly getting underneath us as we uh, overfly the airport of Valencia. So, we're doing everything we can now. The only other thing we can do is completely uh, continue, sorry, reducing speed. Uh, it's the only way we can help ourselves get back onto profile. So we're not too high yet. We're only about 600 feet off the profile. We can continuously let that develop, ensure that we uh, get uh, very high, and then I'm going to show you how we deal with that uh, during this part of the descent. 
Okay, so now you can see uh, we left a little while. We're still maintaining 260, but now we're almost 2,400 feet high on profile. I brought the speed back all the way to 210 knots to uh, ensure that we have enough energy during the descent, but we would never bug into the minimum maneuver margin. We'd always stay above this speed. I would imagine that now Spanish ATC has given us our descent clearance and they've told us to descend to flight level at 130. So that's now set. Not quite. There we go, set. And we then go in the PFD 130 chase. Now the descent mode we'd use now is level change. Okay, so level change is the most efficient way to descend quickly. Uh, it basically commands you to close the thrust lever and it'll fly the speed here. Now because we've reduced our speed, we can increase it. That's going to make the aircraft pitch nose down. It's going to give us a higher rate of descent. Uh, so we're going to initially bug our target speed in the FMC of 250 knots. Uh, if you go to the descent page, here's our target speed. Now, we are now 3,000 feet high, but now because we're accelerating and we're diving down, we are catching the profile back up. And that's what we do. We're now trading our, our potential energy, which is our height, into kinetic energy, which is our airspeed. And we're increasing our airspeed and getting back onto the profile. So, you should already can see here, when we reach 250 knots, the aircraft's going to pitch up to maintain that new speed. It's probably not going to be enough to get back onto the profile. Now, you could use one thing which is speed brake but instead of using speed brake what we can do we can further accelerate the aircraft it can go all the way up to 330 knots if you wanted to so let's go to 290 knots now what I can do now is update the target speed in the FMC so let's put 290 knots in here and see what that does to the profile at the moment it's saying we're 1700 feet but it is catching up as we accelerate if I put 290 oh, slash execute what, what happens to the path it's going to take its time to calculate a new path and there we go it's built it now we're getting back onto profile at 290 knots as soon as we're back on profile I can engage VNAV VNAV now in VNAV it's going to go to VNAV path FMC speed now in FMC speed it's now accelerating to the new target speed and when it gets to 290 knots it's then going to reclose the thrust levers and then we're going to be back on profile and that's on our new descent to target speed of 290 knots it's built a brand new path and that guys is exactly how we do it in real life okay then guys so i did just skip the video ahead slightly uh, nothing has changed except uh, we're now descending to flight level 70 uh, we're still maintaining 290 knots and we're still in vnav uh, path and the aircraft is uh, maintaining that path and we're just approaching the decel point the deceleration point uh, and that decel point is basically uh, to maintain 220 knots of field net. So approaching that uh, decel point, you can see the speed uh, is now commanded 220 knots. And then the aircraft's going to start pitching up uh, to get to that new commanded speed. So this is all based on the fact that after Vilna we're going to fly this arc. But if you remember, having a look at the approach chart again, you can expect after Vilna to fly direct to a 10 mile final. Uh, so just before we program that, in, pro program that in the FMC, sorry, we'll do our post cruise checks descending below the flight level 100. So we usually do this at 100, and I'll do it now just so I don't forget. Uh, we check the fuel pumps, turn on the lights, and turn off lights, and check the APUs off needed pressurization panel uh, differential is about four and everything else is set check we had the seat belts on which was uh, i turned on at 15,000 feet push recall and then now the 10 checks are complete so things we need to think about now then with this shortcut uh, we've got a tailwind on approach a lot less track miles so we're going to manipulate that now we'll imagine they've uh, contacted us just like they would in real life and they said actually fly deck to sim uh, after vilna you can Descend to 3,300 feet, uh, which is now set, and route to direct to a 10 mile final and your clear approach. So now let's put that in the FMC. So Vilna at the 10 mile point is the Foxtrot India 10 Zulu. And there you can see now, watch what happens to the VNAV profile. We execute it. Uh oh, we're 3,200 feet high. Okay, uh, now we don't want to stay in VNAV because it's going to die for that profile and it's going to make the speed go crazy. Uh, so we're going to go level change and we're going to bug 220 knots all right because we want to comply with this speed restriction at vilna looking at this we're 2600 feet high so one more thing i'm going to do is update 220 knots in the speed window which is what we're going to have to fly put that in the target speed uh, there you go look descent path unachievable so vnav's gone look i can't do this and if you're in vnav it will spit out that mode uh, and still telling us that descent path unachievable 
we can make it if we modify uh, the controls accordingly. So we're already approaching 220 knots, uh, about 2,000 feet high. So we get the speed break out, because we need to reduce um, speed and then pitch nose down and increase our rate of descent. And we're going to go for flat one and maintain 220 knots, and then we're going to assess the situation uh, to see if we're high. Uh, completely forgot, we've been cleared to an altitude, so we need to set the to the local Q&H, which is uh, 1013, so it's the same as standard, and we're passing 10,000 for altitude, 3,300 feet. No flags, standby altimeter is set. So now we've got flat one with speed brake. We've got a rate of descent of about 2,000 feet per minute, a little bit less, and what we have is this thing called a green banana. So this green banana is where we're going to reach our cleared MCP altitude. So we've never changed this in real life, but you can notice if I change the MCP altitude, the green banana moves. It's basically telling us that 3,300 feet is going to happen here, which is great. Uh, it's actually looking quite good, but we've got to also think about the tailwind on approach, which is going to increase our ground speed as well. All right, so match the heading. Uh, now the glide paths come alive, so we can do the approach checklist. We have the identification. Look, you can see we're really high at the moment. So uh, we do the approach checklist. We check the frequencies, 110.3. Uh, we also check what fixed rings we have. So we've got a 10 mile run, uh, ring. We must have flat one already by that point. We already have it, so we can disregard that. And then we have a four mile point, which is the last point in which we can see here at flat 15. Uh, standby instruments are set, so we have local Q&H set 1013, the inbound courses of 100 and 100. We can now do the approach checklist, our Tim's instruments are set, cross-checked, and the approach aid is checked and set. So now we need to start thinking about slowing down as well, so I'm going to go to flat 5 and start reducing speed, okay? Now this is going to have the effect of putting us higher again on profile, because to decelerate we need to pitch those up. 737-800 is notoriously difficult to go down and slow down in as well. Now we've gone to 200 knots, I'm going to bug slightly less, about 190, uh, because I want to get flat 10 out, so below 210 knots, you can see the flat backyard speed in 210. Uh, now we've got that, we can select flat 10, that's going to further increase our drag, and you can see that the green banana has gone slightly in the opposite direction, so I'm actually going to accelerate to 200 knots, which is 10 knots below our back, flat backyard speed ensure that we're stabilised by the time we get on the approach. And that is how you can manipulate the, the flight controls. We need to think about slowing down, so we need to be well below 200 knots, especially as we've got a tailwind, and we can go all the way up to flat 10, and we keep the speed brake extended. But one thing I want to remind you guys about the speed brake is, uh, you cannot go gear down flat 15 and still have the speed brake extended. It must be stowed uh, before landing. That's giving us a really nice rate of descent now. Look, 200 knots, that's uh, two and a half thousand feet. The profile's coming back in. But now I need to think about slowing down as well because we've got the tailwind. So I'm now going to reduce the speed to about 190 knots now. And we just continuously change the speed to make sure we don't get too high or too low on the profile. Uh, the important thing is we've continuously descended the thrust lever for the entire procedure to be closed so we're not wasting any fuel by adding thrust. We have been cleared for the approach, uh, and arm the localizer. Now you would usually arm the approach, but it's critical you don't arm the approach when you're high on the glide path, because you can capture something called the false glide path, uh, which is not the correct one, and basically descend on the incorrect profile. So you can only arm the approach when you're one dot high. There we go, the glide path now slowly coming back in, so we're looking pretty good. Now we need to further reduce the speed, because we've got this tailwind, so we're going to go to 180 knots now. That's going to pitch the nose up, could get us a little bit higher as well. So we need to keep this all uh, in the big picture here, slow down and go down. We we'll want to go to 3,300 feet. Now if we were further, uh, if we were still high by the time we got established on the localizer, you can wind the MCP altitude window down to make sure you don't level off and you can never capture the glide path. So what I'm going to use now is vertical speed, uh, so we can take direct control of the vertical glide path, and I'm going to use it uh, to make sure we get the glide slope capture by 3,300 feet. So we can now start pitching up, uh, wound the speed back to the flat 10 speed, and we don't want to try and level off at 3,300 feet, so we're going to further reduce the vertical speed. We're going to get out of quiet. Uh, there we go, localizer alive. Now we've got the localizer calm, the approach, and we'll hopefully get glide slope capture there for shortly. There we have uh, that too. So we can match the runway heading, which is 
101. And we can set the missed approach altitude, which is 4,000 feet, which is set. And there you go, guys. That is how we can manipulate the flight. And then as soon as we're back on there, completely forgot how you can stow the speed brake because the thrust lead has come up. And yeah, as I was saying, that's how you uh, deal with high energy approaches using a combination of f f uh, flaps and speed brakes. So initially, 220 knots, flat 5 give you about 2,300 feet per minute and then about 180 to 200 knots on flat 10 with speed brake give you about 1,600 feet per minute and give you the slower speed you need on approach and there we go because we've got flat 10 it's going to deal with that uh, tailwind we have as well to keep the speed in control and there we are we're lovely and stabilized for the approach all we need to do is configure at four miles so imagine the cabin's being secure as well so we can move this switch to on and then we would seat the cabin crew using the uh, there's a hand mic here on the back of the pedestal would use that to, to seat the cabin crew for that. All right, so we would usually configure at four miles, but because we've got such a tailwind, we're going to configure at five miles, gear down flat 15, and deal with that approach. Everything's looking good. Stabilised by 500 feet. That's the key thing. Good. So. Approaching five miles now. Yeah, there's five and a half. So we'll go gear down at flat 15, match the speed, and do the landing checks to flaps. So start switches, continuous recall is checked. Speed brake is now armed with the green line landing gear down three. We want to break set to three. We are holding on the landing flaps. So we'd hold this in real life as well. So we've still got. Uh, a little bit to go to the runway. So long as you've got the landing flap by 500 feet in VMC conditions, it's absolutely fine. So I'm going to select the uh, landing flap at the top of the right arc. 1,000 feet, we'd say, is checked. Check the to page 4, because that's what we have in my company. Uh, there we go, top of the white arc. So now I can select flap 30, match the speed. Uh, the current surface wind in Alicante is 20010, so it's a 10 knot crosswind. So I'm just going to go VRF plus 5. And there we go, we're now complete the landing check, so flaps, we have uh, 30 set, and we check we've got 30 pre-programmed, which it is with the green light, and the landing lights are on, uh, we can clear to land, we'll let pretend we've been clear to land, landing checklist is complete, alright, so let's have a go doing a landing, hopefully it's going to be better than all the other ones I've done in my tutorial, and if you watch my r approach tutorial, there'll hopefully be no vans approaching the runway as we go in for a land, so, Disconnect the autopilot. Uh, we don't need to recycle the flight directors on an ILS approach, and then we can follow the guidance in there. Uh, following the two reds, two whites on the pappies to make sure we're on the profile. We follow the flight directors as well. Uh, plus 100, we'd say checked. Minimums. Land at minimums, get a little bit left of centre line. It's got that crosswind, and that just can keep following the flight directors as well. A little bit more thrust because the speed's dropped off. Uh, keep following flight direct is looking stabilised, two reds, two whites, over the threshold 50, 30 we check, close the thrust levers, hold that attitude, oh it always makes it look really firm, alright, <laughs> speed brakes up, uh, we select reverse thrust, we're just going to go idle reverse and then maintain the centre line, and then the um, auto brakes doing the rest of it, so 100 knots, 80 knots, 60 knots manual braking so I want to make this exit we've got a uh, master caution which always happens in PMDG with the reverses when you select idle and then we can make the first exit there cool so captain would turn off the weather radar vacating he would stow the speed brake there we go and he would also turn off all the landing lights and the first officer would do his actions as well well, but all I'm going to do is bring it to a stop here. Cool. Well, that was it, guys. That was the uh, descent management and high energy approach tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions about uh, descent management, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again for another Flight Deck 2 sim tutorial in the very near future. Have a good day, and bye-bye.